Alrighty, welcome back to the uh, quarter scale speeder bike build. And we're almost done with this piece. And I, uh, I honestly, I don't remember where, where I left off last with this. I think in the last video, I showed you how these pieces bolted on uh, right here. I got those pieces like that uh, with some screws or bolts and they bolt on, not like that, they bolt on like this. So those bolt down, so that goes on like that. I got the other side bolted, got the little vent pipes or exhaust pipes, whatever they are. I think I showed you that last time, I don't remember, but if not, there it is. And um, I just have them off for now, so they don't get in the way while I'm working on the rest of it. And I've got this detail on, and those bolts, those bolts, I still need to put nuts on them. Um, look on the back side, I still need to put nuts on those. And I got, you know, if you compare that to uh, the kit piece, there's a few little details here. I just glued on some brass pieces, and I will probably, just to add to it. I'll probably drill a little hole here and here and maybe here and here as well to put some of those small bolts in there just so we got some bolts and stuff. And when you look at the kit piece, the detail here and here, you'll notice they look the same except for those have the holes all the way through and those don't. So when you put the, uh, the pipes on, there's pipes that go into those holes that side doesn't get any pipes. And I'm thinking this is probably like a lot of cars that we have where you could change it from left hand to right hand drive. So maybe, you know, they still have that manifold detail here, but you're only using them over here. But if you flipped it to right hand drive, then maybe you put those over here. And um, of course, I'm just making stuff up at this point. But for those details, I wanted, I wanted on mine, I wanted to have the details, but I wanted them to be slightly different because again, hoses and pipes plug in here, but not here. So what I did on this one was I took some uh, bolts or screws and I just kind of milled the head flat and then I just kind of counterboard or countersunk in a little bit. I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera. But I just kind of countersunk in a little bit just to give that kind of a recessed detail in here. And then on the other side, I just turned those pieces down on the lathe. It's just brass. Turned down on the lathe and drilled through and then bonded in. So kind of my idea is on this side, we have the fittings that the hoses can plug into. And on this side, since the holes aren't used, they just have little caps or plugs or whatever you want to call those. So slightly different on each side. I still need to install the details here. Um, but this is, um, this is getting pretty close to being done. What I still need to make, as far as this piece goes, I still need to make this, that detail that goes here. And I need to make this, that goes on just like that. And there's a small little detail that goes on just like that. Uh, this one, really not concerned about at all. That should be fairly easy and straightforward. This one, again, should be pretty easy, straightforward. Just a piece of the uh, same type of aluminum plate I've been using and then a rod on the backside. So uh, that should be pretty easy. But if we take a look at this one, that one, I don't want to say I'm concerned about it, but I've been thinking about how to do that with all those little... Uh, Fins. I don't know if they're cooling fins or what they are, but I'm thinking the best way to do this is to uh, mill all of those in with the milling machine. And what I'm kind of thinking is this back lip here needs to be a separate piece. That way when I run the milling machine to make those grooves, I can just go all the way through and then put a separate piece on that. That way I don't have to stop at the exact same place every single time. So um, let me find a chunk of aluminum 
that uh, is the right size, three times bigger. And the first thing I'll do is mill out a pocket here. You'll notice that goes on, that goes over that front edge. So I'll need to mill out some material so I have a lip that goes over the front edge. So I'm not really sure why I was so concerned about filling in that gap here, because uh, you're not even going to see it. I'm thinking that's my chunk of aluminum. So that is big enough to cover here. Wide enough, definitely more than it needs to be. And um, if we look at the thickness, that is about five. Eh, it depends on how you measure. It could be five and a half. Five to five and a half. I mean, half a millimeter is basically not much of nothing. If it's five, five times three is 15. This chunk right here is eh, about 13. Not quite enough. Um, I could maybe, I could maybe uh, fudge that a little bit. I don't know if I have a piece that's as thick as it really should be. So this is, so again, this is about, even if that was 12, I know, you know, obviously it's more than 12, but if that was 12 divided by three, that would mean four. So if this piece was four, let's take this to four. If that piece was four, that's pretty close. Like I said, I'm not making this exact scale. Let's see, just that part is two and a half. Two and a half times three would be um, seven. So that part would be seven. That means I would have about that much overlapping the front of that. Yeah. Let me see if I can find a chunk that's a little bit thicker than that. Okay, so I do not have a chunk bigger than that or thicker than that. So we're going to have to make this one work. And um, what I will do is I will just kind of fudge that dimension here just a little bit. And the piece that's sticking up, I'll fudge that just a little bit. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, I'll just kind of split the difference and it will look perfectly fine. Nobody's ever going to measure this and measure that and compare it. As long as it looks fine, then it's fine. As I've already said a few times on this project, uh, I'm not really after making an exact replica of the kit. I'm just making a quarter scale, a quarter scale speeder bike. If some of the dimensions are a little bit off, they're a little bit off. Uh, that doesn't really bother me. So the first thing to do is to uh, cut this to size, and uh, that's going to mean I'm going to have to cut this to length, somewhere right about here, and cut it to width, something about like that. So uh, we'll cut that out, and then I'll put it in the mill, and I'll remove, say, maybe something like that much material here, so that will get removed. And again, that gets cut off. Um, that all goes away. So that's the piece I'm looking for. This is going to be very basic cutting and milling. And what we'll do when I'm ready to uh, mill in all those little grooves right there, then I'll take you over to the milling machine with that piece set up, and then we'll mill those grooves. At least that's the plan. All right, there it is right off the bandsaw. So I'm going to put it in the mill. And I'm just going to end mill to the line. Uh, for what this is, uh, exact dimensions are not that critical. So I'm just going to uh, end mill it to the line and then remove that much there. So I'll get back to you here in just a second. All right, there's that piece off the mill and uh, got all that out. Surface finish is good enough for what it is. And uh, again, this. We'll set in here like that. And so now I need to mill in all the little grooves. So uh, let's take that over to the milling machine and uh, see how that comes out. Okay, so I got a new uh, electronic edge finder. 
uh, I already found the edge over here and set that to zero. So now if I just bring this over to find the other edge here, right there, and then I can come up to here, and theoretically if I hit half, Maybe Y one half. Then I should be able to bring this over till that is on zero. there and that looks like half to me actually I want to change this to I want to change this to uh, millimeters because the cutter I'm going to use I think I'm going to use this one and I, I think that's a four millimeter cutter but what I'm going to do I'll take this out and I'll put the four millimeter cutter in and I'll mill the first channel then I'll go over eight millimeters to another one, over eight to another one, over eight to another one. Then I'll come back to the middle and I'll do the same thing over here. If I just would have started at this edge and done each channel all the way over, then the last groove may not have been perfectly even with the first groove. So by starting with the middle one and do the same either side of that, then I'm guaranteed that uh, it'll be symmetrical. So let me get that swapped over. We'll get the cutter in it and then we'll uh, get back to you here in just a second. All right, the cutter is about 3.1 or 3.2 millimeter, uh, which is fine. And so again, I'm going to go down about three millimeters. I have a Z-stop set um, right there, so it can't go any lower than that. But I'm going to use the DRO and try to go down three millimeters each pass. This is about five millimeters thick. And... Um, I've never used that cutter before. I have no idea if it's new or used or whatever. Um, but uh, let's see how it goes. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to bring, we'll unlock here. And I'm going to bring the Y over six millimeters. So three would be the width of the cutter. So if I bring it over six, 
then that should leave a rib about three millimeters wide. And I notice when I lock it, it changes it a little bit, but that's good enough, I think. And that is wrong, because notice how far over that moved that. Huh. Okay, something very important that I just learned. When you look at your scales, right there is the resolution. And uh, mine are that. And if you go here, and you select this icon here, and you have access set, you have the encoder type, the resolution, and uh, for whatever reason, my X and Y were set to like 10 or something like that. Uh, they weren't, to, I already forgot what they were, they weren't 5. Now the Z was on 5, but you basically have to go through here and set those so they match the scale that's why it was so far off. So, um, that was just something I forgot to look into when I set this thing up. So we should be good now. So now, if I crank over six millimeters, It's close enough for me. Let me get it. All right. There. That is close enough for me. So, that looks much better. So, I'm just going to cut another groove, move over six, cut another groove, move over six, and come back to here, do the same thing. And, um, and I'll get back to you when that's done. I don't think you want to watch another, uh, I don't know, this might take a while. So uh, I'll show you, show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, there it is, and uh, I am very happy with that. It's not, you know, it's not exactly like this. You know, for example, this only has, I think, 12 ribs, and this has 14. And these start off with a flat before the rib, and mine just starts with a rib. But I dare you to ask me if I care, because I don't. Um... That would have been much more difficult without the DRO. Would have been possible, but uh, yeah, the DRO made that so much more easier. Uh, I can't believe I waited so long to get one. I kind of was thinking about it for a while and went back and forth a few times, but uh, I tell you what, I'm so glad I got that thing. Um, it's just, you just got to make sure you have it set up right is all uh, for it to work for you. But um, now if I would not have had a milling machine, I probably just would have cut some square stock brass and then soldered it to a brass plate. Uh, that would have worked. Um, might have been a little more time consuming, but I tell you what, this is the first piece I made strictly using the DRO, and I am very happy with that. It's not perfect, but like I said, I don't care, it's good enough. Uh, so the next thing for this, I need to, you know, to make it match this, I need to round those corners off here, and here, uh, I need to 
round that off there all along here and um, I'll just do that with a file and also you'll notice that on this piece there's another piece that goes along the back here and that kind of goes over top like that so I'm going to do that out of a separate piece again this will go on like that and I'll just cut a separate strip to put on here probably a couple of screws uh, I think what I'm going to do to attach that I think it'd look kind of cool to just counter bore uh, maybe counter bore right in the middle of that rib and right here just counter bore in there for some cap head bolts uh, same type of bolts I used for right there uh, so the bolt heads will be flush with the grooves. I think that would look pretty cool, and that would hold that on there perfectly perfect. So that's probably what I'll do. Um, I still need to go over the whole thing with some sandpaper. You know, it's a little, you know, just to knock the sharp edges off. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, once this is done and bolted on, I will then do this piece. This piece goes on right there like that that'll just be very simple shape um and uh a thing and some things and uh, bolt it on so i'm not going to make you watch me do that we'll just come back when that's done also that piece that goes there so i'll have to uh make something for that it goes onto the bottom i might actually use that for the base that holds it up on the final display maybe i don't know but that'll just be a simple turning and milling process nothing too great there so let me get those pieces done and mounted, and then I want to start covering that uh, the uh, green 3D printed body piece. I want to start getting that covered with some Bondo and getting it sanded smooth. So I'll get back to you when I get some more stuff to show you. Alrighty, here's this part, and I believe that this is all done. And uh, here is the kit counterpart, and and then mine. Again, everything is three times bigger, which makes it one quarter scale. It is mostly aluminum. A couple of steel parts, a couple of 3D printed parts, but it is mostly aluminum. And there are a whole bunch of screws and bolts. This is probably the most screwed and or screwed together thing that uh, I've made. I think there's like over 80 screws and bolts or something like that. I kind of just lost track a while ago anyways if we take a look at this we've got the bottom part here and uh, again there's the kit bottom part and this was pretty straightforward uh, just a piece of aluminum plate and some uh, actually these pieces here those pieces right there were cut out of the brackets that came with my DRO uh, that bracket right there, I basically just cut a piece out of it and then milled it to shape. And that's actually where those pieces right there and there came from. Those were just basic lathe turning operation parts. And that's just a steel rod that I had that I bent and went around there. And that is screwed in with a little screw right there into that part there. So one screw on either end. And uh, again, there's the back side. And I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. Uh, here's the bottom and there's that piece. Again, it uh, doesn't look exactly like the kit piece, but I'm thinking I might use that as the mount for whatever stand that I, that I put it on and I can take that off and make something different. Um, I'll try to make a mount to fit that, but if I need to, I can always replace that to fit whatever mount I can find. Um, that's just screwed on with a couple of 632 bolts, uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's just probably gonna be the mounting point. And then that part there that you saw me mill up earlier, that is now bolted on. Got a couple of bolts here, made a plate there, screwed on, and um, I did kind of mill a little channel on that so it overlaps the, uh, the fins there. And I'm really liking the way that turned out. Uh, I honestly couldn't be happier with that. Got some bolts in the details here. Got those all bolted in. 
and um, and then of course those front pieces and I'm really liking the way this is turning out I'm getting more and more excited about getting this thing done see what it looks like when it's finally done and um, so the next step on this is to cover this in uh, Bondo. So um, as I said in the last video, this is going to get covered in Bondo, sanded smooth, and this will become a buck to make a carbon fiber skin. With the Bondo, I need to fix a few things. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the best at making like compound complex curves in my drafting. So this is a little bit not quite like I like it. I can fix that with a Bondo. Uh, same thing with here. Not exactly the way I like it, so I can fix that with a Bondo. Um, but, and obviously it got thin here because I didn't use very much top layers to save on print time. Um, but yeah, this will all get covered in Bondo and then sanded smooth and painted gloss. And then I can lay a layer of, of uh, carbon fiber on it and that'll become a shell. Once I pop that first layer of carbon fiber off, then I'll lay more layers on the inside to make it a little bit stiffer. Now, somebody in the last video asked a very good question about my method for this. He said, if I just carve this to shape, sand this to shape, and then I put the carbon fiber over top of it and take it off, wouldn't that make it a little bit too big? And the answer is, yes, it will make it a little bit bigger than this, but only by, you know, the thickness of one layer of carbon fiber, which is not going to matter for this. Um, nothing here is dimensionally critical. And um, and even this, I mean, this is this is probably not perfect to scale to the to the um, to the plastic part to the kit part. This might even be a little bit too big or a little bit too small, but it really doesn't matter because again, nothing here is dimensionally critical as long as when it's done, it looks like what it's supposed to look like. So, so yeah, that was a good question and a good thought. Uh, and yes, that is true. If this needed to be dimensionally accurate, then I would have to make a mold of this and then lay the, the carbon fiber inside of that mold. Then it would be exactly the same size as this. But for what this is, that doesn't matter. Um, so let me start getting this covered in, uh, in Bondo, which I don't think I have a lot left. So I might have to go get some more. Uh, the final the final layup of this will more than likely be in the next video because I think this video is getting to be a little bit too long. Uh, but let me get a layer of uh, Bondo on this and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so this is it after the first coating of Bondo. And it's kind of thick and messy and uh, it's not perfectly cured. I mean, it's dry to the touch, but it still feels soft. Uh, once this is fully cured, I'll give it a little bit more time. Then I will sand it all back smooth, and then I'll probably have to do it again. Uh, but each time you do it, it gets a little bit smoother and a little bit nicer. And then once it feels fairly smooth, then I'll try a coat of uh, primer. And once you get primer on it, then you can tell if there's any other little defects or pinholes or whatever. Then you can put some glazing putty on it. But that is going to be a really long, drawn-out process. So I'm going to end the video here. Uh, when we get to the next video, hopefully this will be ready for primer and paint. And then hopefully we can lay up some carbon fiber in the next video. But I would like to thank my, uh, my patrons, uh, these people here and here. Thank you very much. And um, until next time, as always, thanks for watching.